Hello there, welcome back. It's just past seven o'clock in the morning and I'm gonna have another session on a different beach with the ATX. So let's see how we get on today. wet sand behind me I think it's all fresh after the storm when we got here it's full of weed and I think seaweed has got a lot of iron in even the ATX isn't getting very good signals and when it is getting signals it seems to be a huge clump of very deep seaweed which is strange the first target I found is just more or less where the camera is and it's a tiny little button so I think I'm going to stick to the dry sand just behind me here. I think the area right over behind me there is going to be fairly rich. The sand is good there as well. All the sand in the middle of the beach seems to be totally contaminated with weed. You go down through maybe three, four inches, two inches maybe, of good sand. Uh, and you're just into like rotten weed, which is sending the signals all over the place. Even the pointer doesn't want to know. I'm sure it's all that seaweed mixed in with the seawater trying to ground balance it but it just isn't working so I'm gonna to have to stick to the dry sand unfortunately. Now this is the place where I've been using the Vibrotector 730. Just off here there's a lot of little pockets in the rocks and I've been doing very very well with that little small handheld metal detector. But today I'm hitting the beach proper with the ATX and that's the fella there. Now if you've seen some of my previous videos, that probably doesn't need any introduction. In fact, part one of this Mallorca trip has me explaining the features of this particular metal detector. So I'm not going to go through it here. Needless to say, normally it is a beast. Dry sand, wet sand, underwater, a beast. <laughs> That's a very, very rusted one cent piece absolutely knackered there's no point me showing you 50 of these being dug I'll bring the camera in if I find something good here yeah. I've been hunting for the best part of an hour possibly more on a foreign beach where hardly anybody goes metal detecting compared to the UK Beaches tend to get absolutely hammered in the UK, and this is what I found in an hour. Ring pull. And eight small, crappy, unspendable coins in an hour on a pretty much, that's pretty atrocious. And if you're used to watching some of the videos put out by some of the guys in the UK, like Relic Fake in Scotland, You'll be saying, why can't you find silver and gold and all sorts just with a pro pointer? Well, in real life, it's actually pretty hard to find things on a beach. It's deep sand, because the stuff just sinks and sinks and sinks and sinks and sinks, especially over the tide line. 
it just goes down, 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 down. So these little tiny coins, some of these I'm getting from like 10, 12 inches. I'm sure there will be gold here. It could have just sunk out of reach. It could be. I've just yet to find it. I've got another hour, so I'll have a hunt around again. And I'll give you a roundup at the end of the second hour. Definitely got something in here. Definitely got something in here. Must be absolutely tiny. Yes, that's it. That looks like it. <laughs> Another ring pull. That's the harsh reality of beach detecting. A hard dig for a crappy target. The sad thing is we've got a beach bar up here. People spending money there all day, every day. And there's next to nothing on the beach. Absolutely unbelievable. Now the problem with the ATX compared to other detectors is you really only get two tones, you get a high tone and a low tone and they repeat so you have like high, low, high or low, high, low. Any of them could be good targets though and that's the problem. It's not like the CTX where you get a hell of a lot of information feeding back to you and you can really read the ground and you can see with good certainty oh, aye, that's going to be a ring pull but I'm going to dig it anyway in case it's a gold ring. With the ATX it's a lot more hit and hope but it does pick out very small targets at depth. See, I ran the pro pointer over there. Didn't get a signal. Just bang right up at the top, so there's obviously something there. Just about there in the middle of the coil. A rusty nail. Okay, I think we'll make that do. That's pretty much another hour. I'll give you a brief rundown of what I've found and I'll give you a roundup of what I thought of this beach. Okay, that was from the second hour with the ATX and I was a little bit nearer where the beach bar is. Quite a few bits of euros. few rusty nails, hair slide, zip puller. Basically it's all the stuff that you find on beaches. You know, there's, there's nothing amazing, nothing out of the ordinary. And in that hour we must have got, I don't know, 15, 16 coins, maybe more. Amazingly, the biggest denomination is 20 cents. You know, that's absolutely atrocious. I've barely got one euro in two hours, which is absolutely terrible. <laughs> so this stuff can go in the tumbler, this stuff can go in the bin, and that's the sum total for the two hours on the beach. Rusty, crusty, crappy coins. Quite a few of them, and I suppose Looking at it optimistically, any one of those could have been a gold ring. But I found no jewellery or anything of value whatsoever. This was a real, real disappointment. I was expecting this beach to be great. That fella behind me, who's on with the leaf blower, I was talking to him before. Unfortunately, I didn't speak Spanish, he didn't speak English. But he was asking me how much the detector was. And when I wrote down in the sand how much it was in euros, he just started laughing at me and then drove off in his little beach buggy thing. And when he drove off, he was speaking something in Spanish. I didn't understand what he was saying, but looking at it pessimistically and comedically, I would imagine that he was saying something like, you're wasting your time. Me and my mates come down here every weekend and we pound this beach.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>